Brother Franklin Graham did something. The son of Billy Graham. I think he did something. I don't know. I'm not sure. But I got a feeling. Oh, yes. I got a feeling. I got a feeling. Franklin Graham said something to somebody that God moved upon his heart to say something to somebody. I don't know. I hope to God he did. But for these, this, this turnaround, for these justices, they normally don't do this. This is out of the ordinary. Glory be to God. Don't you get mad at me if you want your country back. You want to be able to go to the grocery store without wearing a mask. <clears throat> we don't even have a big problem in the town I live in with the coronavirus plague. But I guarantee you this, you won't get into any grocery store around here without a mask. Oh. I guarantee you that. They will stop you at the door. And see, I live in Texas. Everybody be packing in Texas. Everybody be packing. The grocery store owner, everybody, everybody. Everybody got a piece. <laughs> everybody got a piece in Texas. So you, 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 if they tell you to put that mask on, I would advise you to do so. Because if you jump. If you jump crazy, you may not make it out of there. Uh, I live in a county where the teachers have guns in the school. You hear what I'm saying? They don't play. <laughs> you come in there talking stupid if you want to. You, you, you're going to leave out in the box. So you don't know the... They don't not have guns in school. Well, they don't not have guns uh, coming onto the campus shooting the children either. So somebody got to go. Might as well be them. <laughs> you know, I'm just, hey, that don't sound too Christian to me. Uh, I'll never move to Texas. Glad. I'm glad you won't come. There's more room for me. Don't come. <laughs> anyway, let me move on. Ladies and gentlemen, because I could, I could go all day long. Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 3 and 4 says, For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, <clears throat> and sow not among thorns. <clears throat> Pardon me. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. the evil of your doings. The problem in America and the problem in the world is we have done evil in God's sight, and yet God has been very gracious and good to us. Uh, and this is the problem. And that's why we have this plague sitting on us <clears throat> in the great America. Everybody got to wear a mask. Can't go anywhere to the movie theaters are shutting down permanently. I don't know why, but God has shown mercy in the grocery stores for some reason. I guess he, he wants his people who are obedient to him to eat. But for some reason, you don't have, you don't find many outbreaks in grocery stores. I don't know why. But uh, at um, 
the White House the other day. It's going to end up 50 to 100 people impacted by that little gathering they had for the new Supreme Court justice. Pastor John Hagee is sick. He fought for having services and and having his Christian school to be open for live teaching and learning. Now he's sick. Greg Lowry is sick. I personally believe he's the one behind pushing Dr. John McArthur on uh, to fight to stay open. That, that's what I believe. I believe he's behind that, uh, him and a few others. That's what I believe. I hope I'm wrong. But now he's sick. See, this virus does not care who you are or who you think you are. And it is a virus, it is a plague that you can't avoid. So God is showing grace to you in the midst of a plague. This is a light plague, as I have said, compared to the plagues that will be coming down the pike if we don't repent in a hurry. And that will come in the future where the plague is going to come up into your house and into your bedchamber and get you and choke you to death uh, in your bed. You can't run away from it. So you better take advantage of being wise and smart and saying uh, and, and getting away from it, staying away from people. All can, we got Now we got the whole Pentagon uh, quarantining because they've been around the President of the United States. And I hope they can do their job from home for real. Because if any enemy wanted to attack, this would be the time. We got the President down with the coronavirus plague. There's hardly anybody at the White House right now. First lady is sick. The uh, spokesperson is sick, McEnany. The beautiful Miss Hicks is sick <coughs> with the coronavirus. Former governor of New Jersey is sick. Everybody in the Pentagon almost is sick. They all quarantining. It's just foolishness, people. Hubris and pride. And, 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 and this silly talk, silly talk. We're going we're gonna to attack this uh, virus. We're going to fight it. And our president has fought it, and he's won. And this is sick. this is ridiculous. I've, I've never seen Americans act like this. <clears throat> I've never seen white folks act like this and talk crazy like this. Uh, nor have I ever seen black folk talk crazy. What, what kind of talk is this? This is a virus. This virus does not care about you getting all gung ho. Tell me you're going to fight it. <clears throat> that's that's silliness. You understand? And we're going to fight it. We're going to take it on, and we're going to battle it. And we're going to win this. Shit. This is not. This is. This is about winning the war very smartly. <clears throat> by being smart, you can't. This is not a football game. This is not a, a physical war. What you need to do is sit down somewhere and stay home. And run everything from home because. Thank God we can do that. If I was the president, if I was the president, if I would step down and become president, I would do fireside chats until Jesus comes. I would fireside chat everybody all day long. I mean, every day. <clears throat> I would tweet. I would talk to the American people. 
sit down in a rocking chair and talk to the American people with a fire. A fire. Even if it's hot outside, I'll have a fireplace over their own. And I'll just talk to the people, keep everybody informed of what's going on. I don't have a spokeswoman, I don't have, so i got to tell the people myself. You can do everything from home. You don't need to be around a bunch of people spreading the coronavirus plague, causing them to spread the coronavirus plague. And for the protesters, they can protest from home. It's not it's not wise people and 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 and, and uh, you don't need to go to the church building but you do need to go to church the Bible knowledge commentary says Jeremiah then used two metaphors to show the need for repentance <clears throat> Two metaphors to show the need for repentance. The first metaphor pertained to farming. Just as a farmer does not sow his seed on unplowed ground, so God does not sow his seed of blessing in unrepentant hearts. He just doesn't. Break up your fallow ground. Confess your sins. Dig down deep. Repent of your sins. Let God break up your fallow ground to show you your sin. Break the. Let God break the band of wickedness that is in you. All of your sin, not just the ones you. Uh, that are open, but the hidden sins that you hide from church members and from family members, your pornography watching, your lust, your lying, your living a lie, being dishonest, bad attitude, bad spirit, your hypocrisy, how that you can be happy and uh, laughing around certain people, but you can't be that way around your family. Hatefulness, prejudice, pride, stubbornness, all of these hidden sins, these besetting sins, these weights, God wants you to break all of that up. He wants you to confess it and repent. Stop playing or trying to play with God. The men of Judah and Jerusalem needed to break up the unplowed ground of their hearts through repentance, through confession of sin. The second metaphor came from the Jewish practice of circumcision. And I, I, I would love to tell the story about a preacher friend of mine uh, who uh, preached on circumcision. A young preacher, was a preacher boy, preached on circumcision one Sunday. All I'm going to say, I, I don't have the time to bring, to, to deal with the whole story, but all I'm going to say Everybody fell out laughing in the church. He was a young preacher. He, all, all I'm going to say is that he started pointing to everybody in the church, to the pastor, to the pastor's wife, to the women, to the children. You all need to be circumcised. <laughs> and we fell out laughing. I mean, I mean, boy, we laughed all out of the church. Some of us had to get up because the brother was preaching his first sermon. We had to get up out of the church belly laughing we could barely get out of the church everybody went back to the back the pastor was falling out pastor's wife was falling out we all in the back laughing our heads off at the poor young preacher he was dead serious but he, but he just messed up he just chose the wrong thing but anyway god has not chosen the wrong thing and we have not 
in reading this passage. Circumcision was a sign of being under God's covenant with Israel. The men, though circumcised physically, needed to circumcise their hearts so that their inward condition matched their outward profession. Unless Judah did exercise true repentance, not just outward profession, like so many of us do, you know, we're some good confessors and we're good professors, but we're not, we're not, uh, we're not circumcised, if you will, on the inside. We're not right with the Lord for real on the inside as we should be. And that's what's wrong with the church today. And that's why we got this plague sitting down on us. A bunch of outward work. Oh, oh, the activity is, is off the chain. Oh, my soul. All churches are doing all kinds of things. They had the, got the, everybody at the church every night of the week doing stuff. Everything, everything but doing what they should be. Praying, confessing their sins, repenting and uh, getting their heart right with the Lord, witnessing for the Lord. They're not doing that. They're doing everything under the sun, planning events, planning comedians, uh, figuring out how they can get uh, $10,000 to get a certain singer in to attract a certain amount of people, a certain comedian in. And they're not a preacher, but a man of God. They don't want him in. They want a comedian to make the people laugh. They want to, how much is it going to cost to get the clown in here? So we get the clown for the children. You know, we're going to have clown day on Saturday where we're going to uh, have apples thrown at the pastor and all other such demonic foolishness from hell. What about the fall festival, preacher? Uh, uh, you know, that's supposed to be a fun time. That'll bring out some people. You don't have time for that. We're doing everything under the sun but what God told us to do. The great commandment, the great commission, and to pray without ceasing. Everybody's playing and ain't nobody praying. Unless Judah did exercise true repentance, not just outward profession, God's wrath would be released and would burn like fire against the people and once God's wrath was released no one could quench it shall we pray holy father God in heaven we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we praise you and we thank you for the uh, standing between the living and the dead service one and the standing between the living and the dead service too. And uh, we give you the glory for your presence, your unction, your anointing, and your power. And Holy Father God, thank you for your holy word in this briefing. Thank you for leading me to always start with your holy word uh, in these briefings. And to explain what we need to do to stay the plague and to... Uh, survive the plague and thank you Lord for wisdom and knowledge and understanding help us all to humble ourselves who name the name of Christ we cannot ask the world to do this they don't even know they wouldn't know what we're talking about as you know so Lord we're talking about people who are called by your name and we are the people called by your name in the earth today Christians help us Holy Father God to humble ourselves and to pray and to seek your face and to turn from our wicked ways and, uh, and to repent and to get back to you Lord Jesus our first love in a very real sense by your grace and by the power of your Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake Amen Ladies and gentlemen, Leonard Ravenhill said, No man is greater than his prayer life. No man, no woman is greater 
than his or her prayer life, and that is so true. All right, here's the briefing news. You already know about President Trump being stricken by the coronavirus uh, plague um, and the fact that he downplayed it for many months by his own uh, admission and from his own speeches and comments. According to the Guardian News of Great Britain, several members of Trump's inner circle have tested positive for the coronavirus plague. Some of these members are White House aide Hope Hicks. And and let me say this, uh, we don't know, but I believe that it was not Hope Hicks that gave it to President Trump. I believe that President Trump gave it to Melania and to Hope Hicks. I believe that he was sick the night of the debate. I really do. And that's what I believe. Uh, I can't <clears throat> tell you how I came to that. All I know was that when he was, when I saw him on the day of the debate, I said, this man is sick or exhausted or something. Something was wrong. And I come to find out later that he did not come in time to be tested. Uh, I believe that he was sick that day and that they, um, he was not tested. He probably... Uh, if he was tested before the debate, as he should have been, they probably would not have had the debate. But anyway, that's what I believe. And, um, and it's sad either way. Chief Counselor Kellyanne Conway. Now her daughter claims that she, she's sick as well. Trump advisor Chris Christie, former governor of New Jersey. Presidential assistant Nicholas Luna. Republican Senator Mike Lee of Utah. Republican Senator Tom Tillis of North Carolina. Republican Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. Republican, Republican National Committee Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel. Trump campaign manager Bill Stepien and that that also includes the fiasco of his former uh, campaign manager. They're not sick but they were acting like they were sick down in Florida. Pascal I think his name is he has resigned from the um campaign around the same time. Uh, White House Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany, President of the University of Notre Dame, Priest John Jenkins, Assistant Press Secretaries Chad Gilmartin and Caroline Levette, and New York Times White House correspondent Michael Shear. In addition, two other unnamed journalists, two unnamed White House staff members, and one of the military aides tasked with carrying the nuclear football have tested positive. And I just mentioned to you about nine folks from the Pentagon, including uh, the... Uh, the chief of all the generals, I forget the official title, he's sick. According to USA Today, the military joint chiefs of staff, thank you very much, are quarantining after Admiral Charles Ray, the vice con commandant of uh, the Coast Guard, 
tested positive for the coronavirus plague. According to the Christian Post, Pastor John Hagee of Cornerstone Church in San Antonio, Texas, has tested positive for the coronavirus plague. According to Christianity Today, uh, Pastor Greg Lowry of Harvest Christian Fellowship in Riverside, California, has tested positive for the coronavirus plague after attending Amy Coney Barrett's Supreme Court announcement. According to the AP, the World Health Organization has said that 10% of the world's people may have been infected with the coronavirus. And then he added, that means that there's 90% out there that can get infected. That's what the guy who made the announcement said. I don't know why he said that, but it's very interesting. <clears throat> According to the Daily Mail, the U.S. coronavirus death toll may be undercounted by as much as 36% as a study of excess deaths finds there may be another 75,000 unconfirmed coronavirus fatalities and, and most of you are not shocked at that because I've been telling you for seven or eight months however long it's been that they were undercounting some and they were undercounting on purpose the government and uh, uh, even the media uh, but they are undercounting for another reason some people are dying at home and they don't count the people who die at home. According to the New York Times, a new study shows that nearly a third of hospitalized coronavirus patients experience some type of altered mental function, ranging from confusion to delirium to unresponsiveness. According to uh, CNBC, the CDC, uh, has finally acknowledged that the coronavirus spreads through airborne transmission. So be careful. And so, ladies and gentlemen, there are no doubt another hundred plus stories that I can share with you about church members uh, who have died who are sick with the coronavirus plague, school, uh, like the mother and the daughter, both teachers, they have died of the coronavirus plague out of South Carolina, and on and on we can go. But we're going to stop there, today. and I told you I would help you uh, with... Uh, uh, several things and right now I am helping you with the most pressing things uh, they ran a story this morning a lady who had a great job at LAX making about twenty dollars an hour and she was very you know in a position where she was uh, able to easily take care of her family and uh, she told how the cupboard was always the, that's what my wife calls the cabinet. We call it the cabinet. She calls it the cupboard from Jamaica, influenced by England. Uh, she said to the lady that the cabinet used to always be full. And she said, that, you know, yes, we live paycheck to paycheck, but we always had food to eat and bills were paid. Now we live from box to box, box that she gets from Salvation Army every week. And whatever they choose to give her, she has to make that work for the whole week. And she said that she gives the children the food and she, uh, she eats what she can afterwards, as any good mother would do. <clears throat> she eats the leftovers. And um, people are hurting. 
uh, today, and then uh, she's only in her apartment because of the stoppage of evictions by the government. Second Kings chapter 8 verses 1 and 2 says, Then spake Elisha unto the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise, and go thou and thine household, and sojourn wheresoever thou canst sojourn. For the Lord hath called for a famine, and it shall also come upon the land seven days, and, I'm sorry, seven years. And the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. It was a play that you could survive if you would move. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? This is a plague that you can survive if you make some adjustments, if you make some changes, if you move. There are some neighborhoods in New York City you don't need to be living in right now. And I'm speaking to some people in New York City right now. Don't, they, they, they're shutting you down. You need to get up out of there as soon as you can and go to the countryside somewhere. You should have been gone already because I told you this was going to happen again. Okay, I told you to leave back in March. I told you to leave back in uh, April, June, July, August, September. I kept telling you, you get your grip. It's not going to get any better. It's going to increasingly get worse because we're not repenting. I know you don't understand that. I know you don't see the connection. What is us repenting to God have to do with this plague? And us can't we can't do what we want to do and and have and have our way and get back to normal. I know you don't understand. I, I, it would take too long to try to explain it to you. But it's very connected. Very much so. You need to understand that God is not going to give this country the blessings he has given this country and we do what we've done in his face and claim to be a Christian nation. He's not going to let. He's not going to do that. He's not going to let that happen. And so God is punishing us. Yes, the great America. I know you don't understand it, but that's what's happening. It's very much connected. We have gone too far with God, and I cannot promise you we're going to get back to normal. Nor can President Trump. Nor can anybody else. I doubt it at this point. I believe that little by little, as I have been telling you for 10 years, God is slowly but surely dismantling America. At first, trying to get our attention so that we will repent, but we're not repenting fast enough. And we all know it. I'm talking about Christian people. Up there still trying to have sex with a mask on. You have got to, you've lost your righteous mind. You're still trying to see Sylvia. You're still trying to see your side piece with a mask on. The mask ought to stop you. The mask ought to say, uh, Negro, go back to your house with your wife. When Sylvia comes to the door with a mask on, that ought to say, don't do it. Don't go. Something is saying to you, don't go in the house with Sylvia. You know what Sylvia can do. She has a mask on her face. Go back home to your wife and to your children. When Bo Peep comes to the door, the mask ought to stop you, girl. No matter how good it might be to you. The mask, you can't see his face. The mask ought to say, no, you're going away from here. I don't want to catch the coronavirus plague. I can't catch my breath. Slam the door in his face. 
but people are still trying to sin against God. And the flood is just all around you. Water is going up and up. You're still trying to sin against God. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. You better get ready and bear this in mind. God told Noah in the rainbow sign, it won't be water, but fire next time. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. You better get ready and bear this in mind. God told Noah in the rainbow sign, it won't be water, but fire next time. So, as Elisha told the woman whose son he raised from the dead, you need to move. And I've been telling you for months. You need to move out of big cities. I know you love it, some of you young people. I know you love it. You just love it. You love it. I know. I know. When I was a young person, I lived in the big city, and I loved it. But you need to move out into the country right now. And here are some alternatives. You can buy off-grid housing from Country Homes of America. Country Homes of America is the largest rural listing service in the nation. The network specializes in land for sale, which includes farms, ranches, mountain property, Lake houses, lake houses, that sounds nice, river, homes, and residential homes in smaller towns across the country. Out in the boonies, that's where you need to go. I've been telling you this for months, seven months at least, I think. You need to move out of New York City. You need to move out of Atlanta. You need to move out of Dallas. Yes. You need to move out of McKinney, the fastest growing city in the state of Texas. You need to move. Too many people. Too much stuff going on. Get out into the country. God bless your heart. You need because see this this disease, this 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 uh, coronavirus play, it moves from people. It moves from person to person. You don't need to be in an apartment complex. I, I know you love it. I know you love your condo, but you're too close to folk. You need to get out in the boonies. Okay? And here's your second alternative. You can buy a mobile home. They call them all kinds of names now to try to hide the mobile home. But that's what it is. That's what we used to call it back in the day. Mobile home. Nobody wants to live in a mobile home today, but many of us were raised in mobile homes. You can buy one from Palm Harbor Homes. They call them manufactured homes at palmharbor.com. Palm Harbor Homes is one of the nation's largest builders of manufactured homes and modular homes. Get yourself one and see, when I, as I tell you to move, I want you to move like this. Pay for it in full if you can. Just a few months ago, Palm Harbor Homes, they were selling a three-bedroom, two-bath, I think, for $29,000. That means, you know, sell your house, sell your big fine house on Pork Chop Hill. Don't try to keep your house. Rob Lowe just, sell, just sold his mansion, his sprawling mansion. Took him two years to sell it, but he sold it. Sell your big fine house, get some good equity out of that bad boy, and buy you a modular home and move it out in the boonies. Uh, so far from the road, for example, many people in Texas they got houses up into the up on the hill. When you pass by their place, you don't even know who if they have, there's a house up there. That's what you need. Be away from everybody. And you need, and it's cheaper to live out in the country. That's another thing. 
Okay, and you need something because see this right here is getting worse. Uh, in a few months, three to four thousand people are going to die a day. You don't need to be near that, and you need to be away from the virus, and the the economy is going to go bust. And you need to have your place paid for in full with the title deed in your name and in your hand. Because uh, you don't need to be have you don't need to be making payments. Because that may be uh, it may turn out to be a situation that that uh, uh, they're going to jack up the prices and the interest and everything. And you don't need payments. You need to have stuff paid off. And when you move out of your big fine house on Pope Chop Hill, uh, sell your or give back to Bubba and them your Pope Chop Hill furniture. Don't try to store it. You can buy some furniture later if things get back to a halfway normal situation. It'll never be normal again in America. You can buy, buy furniture. It'll be on the cheap by that time. Just sell it. Back, give it back to the people or sell it. You don't need payments. Those of you who got car notes, $500, $600, $700, all that foolishness, you don't need a car note. You don't need heavy insurance. You need to sell that sell that car or give it back to the people you got it from. Take it back down into Bubba.com. You don't need payments. The only thing you want to pay is any utility bills that's it and your internet bill because you're going to need the internet to do school work and you need the internet to get your business started next the next alternative third alternative you can find motorhomes and rvs at campingworld.com the nation's largest RV dealer with over 27,000 RVs and travel trailers and fifth wheels uh, for sale. Now, this is another thing the rich white folks do. They sell their big fine house on Porkchop Hill. They go and buy an RV, a motorhome, a fifth wheel, or a trailer cash. They got thousands of dollars in the bank and... Uh, and they live in that motorhome or that travel trailer. And there's some travel trailers and motorhomes and fifth wheels that will put some houses to flat shame. Believe that. Believe me. There's some, in fact, I believe there's some things in motorhomes and travel trailers and fifth wheels that houses, they don't even come close to touching the conveniences. You know, if you can afford a new one, get a new one. Pay for it cash. Be done with it. I don't want to travel all around the world in this place. I'm not talking about traveling, man. I'm talking about living. What are you talking about? We're not talking about the same thing. You, you, you go to a place that you love, that is out in the boonies, out near a lake, out near a river, with clean air, with some good people. They're not going to bother you. You don't want to go to a place where there's some low life. Okay, don't, don't you get mad with me. Go to a nice RV park and you park that thing, level that thing out, and you pay, uh, some of you people would be able to pay for a whole year. They may give you a break. Do that and live there. And then if you want to go somewhere, you get into your little car and you go somewhere. Stay in a hotel once every two weeks, if that's what you want to do, and live the life. There are people who live in their RV, their motorhome, <clears throat> their fifth wheel. And there, and there are many folk who love the fifth wheel, like a big old house. You got your house with you. And, and, and see... You, if God show you favor and they let you stay there permanently, they have spots that they are willing to rent permanently. I know people who stay in one place for 10 years. 
They stay until they die. Okay, so it's a beautiful life. We're not talking about traveling all over, all over the world. There are many people who have done that. There are some people who love to travel. They love to tra go here, there, and there. So I did all my travel when I was young, and I'm here to tell you. And, though, and I told my children, and they did this. I thank God, uh, my oldest uh, three children. Uh, they, follow, they follow me in my footsteps. I traveled while I was young. I preached the gospel around the world when I was young, and I'm so glad God led me to do that. I don't know, I don't know why anybody 60 years old, 65 years old, 68 years old, want to travel around the world. To me, that's crazy because traveling is not for old people. To me, it's just not. Don't wait. Don't wait, work 30 years, 40 years in a factory, or work 40 years someplace. And then want to uh, get, do your retirement and, and, and get retired and, and, and then travel around the world. That's not living the good life to me. You do all your traveling while you're young. Well, you can carry them suitcases and you can be healthy and strong. And you don't need it. You don't need any pills on the road, man. Not traveling around the world. You don't need pills. You don't need no metformin and 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 all kinds of other pills. You got to keep up. All right, fourth alternative. You can buy a mini house, a tiny house from tinyhouselistings.com. Tiny House Listings focuses on exploring and sharing the benefits of living in a smaller, less expensive, more humble home that frees up time and cash. Some of you, you know, you're, you, some of you got the same mentality that Deion Sanders has. Deion said, I, I, I've done the big house. I've had the big house. And, uh, you know, the big fine house on Pork Chop Hill. He said, I don't need all that now. And so guess what Deion Sanders did? He got a tiny house built. Out in the boonies. And he loves it. In closing today, so th these are some alternatives for you. Make your move today. You should have made it already, but if you haven't, try to make it now. Don't be surprised if, when you drive up into a small town. Uh, they won't ask you now, who, who are you and where are you coming from? Because they're going to ask you. Somebody's going to ask you that. So if you come from New York, uh, they may send you back. So be on the lookout for that now. But in closing, I told you that I would help you with the home family life, the home church life, the home school life, and the home business life. And I've done that. But like I told you at the beginning, I'm dealing with uh, the things that are urgent right now. And so right now, I'm still dealing with the home school life. And uh, we raised our children by homeschooling them. Uh, my children have never been to public school, and so we raised them uh, uh, by homeschooling them from the time they were born until they graduated from college. So uh, I think I can tell you something. But today I'm going to let the homeschool mom help you out at thehomeschoolmom.com. Check out her website. She's got it laid to help you. Life Packs Review from thehomeschoolmom.com. Life Pack is a full-color consumable work text, homeschool curriculum with Bible-based content for grades K-12, designed by a team of accomplished Educators with years of classroom experience. Life Pack is based on the principle of mastery learning. Students master content in students master content 
in each unit work text before progressing to the next. Ten life pack work texts provide one full year of learning content per grade level. Individual work texts can also be used as supplemental material uh, as well. In addition, you can mix and match subjects or grade level work texts to personalize your students' curriculum. Content, uh, curriculum content. Individual work texts take approximately three to four weeks to complete. All right, next for today regarding homeschooling, for many of you are doing this, please, mothers, fathers, whoever you might be, Please understand that many of your children children are using Zoom, so you cannot do like you normally do if your children are on Zoom. Because as in the newspaper today, a child was learning via Zoom, and the mother walked out into the room with her birthday suit on. She was naked. And one of the teachers hollered out, oh my, <laughs> who is that naked? <laughs> and the poor little boy had to point at my mom, mom, you got to go back in. The boy could have been no more than five or six years old. So there's been many mishaps like this with Zoom. Understand, Zoom can see you, okay? Every, and everybody can see you. So understand, and you can't, you can't say everything that you might normally say. Because people cannot, the Zoom can not only see you, they can hear you. And you don't want to embarrass your child in school through Zoom. So be careful. The Freedom of Flexible Learning, Part 2. What do you mean by flexibility? At times, it will be appropriate to speed up or slow down in response to your child's needs. A student who is struggling or is new to a concept may need more time, more attention, and more practice before being ready to move on. On the other hand, some learners will grasp concepts more readily than others, and they will be capable of moving on to the next lesson faster and with less repetition than a student who needs more time and practice to understand a given topic. If a given lesson if a given lesson covers something that your child has already encountered, perhaps even mastered, you can choose to review that material quickly, do only selected assignments, or even skip the lesson altogether. The opportunity to implement a personalized learning experience is one of the primary benefits of the flexibility of homeschooling your children. So be encouraged. Uh, this is not the end of the world. And may I say to you lovingly, stop being selfish. It's not about you. It's about the children. And it should have been that way all along. Don't get mad at me. Uh, we have a generation of adults who are selfish and concerned about themselves and more concerned about getting their groove on more than the young people do. So you're going to have to put that aside now and focus on your children and getting them through what will be the toughest time of your life and their life. And you need God to help you. So if you don't know God... You need to get to know God by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
So, dear friend, if you're with us today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, allow me to show you how you can place your faith and trust in him for your soul's salvation from the power of sin and from the punishment of sin in that awful place called hell. First, dear friend, please understand that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Holy Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Please understand that because of your sins, you deserve eternal punishment in hell. That's how much God hates sin, but that's not all. That's how bad sin is, really. Sin causes untold damage in the trillions of dollars if you can put a monetary value on it. And and destruction of lives. Sin is a bad thing. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. That means that Uh, because of our sinful nature and our sinful choices. We're all going to die. The body goes to the grave. The soul goes to eternal death in hell if it has never believed in the Lord Jesus Christ in this life. But here is the good news. You don't have to go to hell. Hell is bad news, but here is the good news. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The phrase, for God so loved the world, means that if you are in this world, God loves you. No matter what you have done, God loves you. The phrase that he gave his only begotten son, that's how much God loves you, refers to none other than Jesus Christ, the God-man, the man who never committed a sin in word, thought, or deed, but yet he died for our sin. He suffered, he bled, and he died on the cross for our sin, was buried, and rose on the third day. Our next phrase is that whosoever believeth in him, the word whosoever means anybody at any time, Red, yellow, black, or white, rich or poor, beautiful or not so beautiful, rich or poor, educated or uneducated, whosoever, black, white, red, or yellow, we're all precious in God's sight, whosoever believeth in him means to trust in him, to depend upon him to rely on him or to have faith in him for your soul's salvation. So all you have to do, dear friend, is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the next phrase says, and you should not perish. That means you will not go to hell. And the final phrase says, but have everlasting life. You can avoid going to hell and you can go to heaven by simply believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ suffered for you. He suffered, he bled, he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day. And all you have to do is believe in him. For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart 
that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Saved to what? Saved to go to heaven. So dear friend, if you are right now believing in your heart in Jesus Christ, I'll be more than happy to lead you in what is called the sinner's prayer. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have done evil in your sight. For I have sinned against you. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe with all of my heart that he suffered and bled and died on the cross for my sins. Was buried and rose on the third day. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul today. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins, past and present. And help me to turn from my evil life and to follow you, Lord Jesus Christ, in the new life. For it is in your name I do pray. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day, allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting in Jesus Christ, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my book titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. It is a free download. It is a free download. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So, dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you went in through the door of eternal life through Jesus Christ today, please email us at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good is my prayer. If the Lord tarries his coming, we'll be back here tomorrow morning on Wednesday at 11 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Pacific, if it be uh, the Lord says the same, and we live. And uh, if we're not here on time, uh, just hang around and we'll be there. And I'll be preaching tomorrow by the grace of God also after the two services in the morning, the uh, Gospel Light House of Prayer prayer meeting message. And so plan on being with us if the Lord tarries is coming and we live. Let's all stand and close out with a word of prayer. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you and we thank you so much for what you have done in this briefing today. Thank you for your liberty. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your love and grace. 
help the people to take heed for their own good. For the truth of the matter is, Lord, most of us living today in the church and outside of the church, we don't take heed to your holy word as we should. We don't take heed to the man of God as we should anymore. And so I pray that, Lord, your Holy Ghost would work mightily on the hearts and minds and lives of people and not give them rest until they come to know your Savior. And if they're already Christians, that they humble themselves and pray and seek your...